We all know that governments are quick to pull out their wallets and slow to rein spending in. So naturally, it caught my attention this week when the province of Alberta announced that it was pulling one and a half billion dollars in funding for Calgary's LRT Green Line, in which costs are exploding out of control. Now, some of you don't like when I criticize Alberta Premier Daniel Smith's government. I'll continue to do that where appropriate, but I'll also give credit where credit is due. If the city of Calgary wants to expand public transit, they should find a feasible way to do so. And maybe, dare I say, they should even find a way to pay for it themselves. I know, some of us are still dreamers. I'm Rachel Parker, and you're watching the Alberta Roundup. Okay, everyone, taking a look at our first story here, Calgary Mayor Jody Gonick said this week that for all intents and purposes, Calgary's Green Line LRT project is scrapped, at least for the foreseeable future. Her comments come after Alberta Transportation Minister Devin Dreeshen sent a letter on Tuesday in which he said the province would pull its portion of the funding, which totals $1.53 billion. Dreeshen said the city's recently revised Calgary Line LRT plan was unacceptable and that was fast becoming a multi-billion dollar boondoggle. In a statement on X, Dreeshen also wrote, this new green line alignment is billions over budget and serves too few Calgarians. There has to be a better way to invest $6.2 billion of taxpayers' money to improve Calgary's transit system for the needs of many more commuters. We look forward to seeing a new alignment from an independent third party, separate from the city of Calgary, before determining the next steps for the green line. Gondek said the latest provincial move now significantly changes the prospect of the project. She added, quote, as a result of that, we are no longer as a city able to afford the cost of this project. Here's what else she had to say. The reality is the local government can no longer fund and finance the costs of delays on this project. It's now in the hands of the province to understand how they will deliver it and we will see what they come back with. Moving into the controversy of the week, a new report is warning the Alberta government against expanding online gambling in the province. On Thursday, the nonpartisan think tank Cardis released a study on online sports betting in Ontario, outlining the harms associated with the increase of online gambling in that province. Cardis president for Canada, Brian Dykema, said that Alberta should learn from Ontario and not move forward with this. Adding, quote, there is going to be more harm than good done. Single game sports betting was legalized in Canada in 2021, and a year later, Ontario allowed private operators to offer online gambling, also known as iGaming. Dykema said that the market has seen significant growth, both in the number of accounts and in the amounts being bet, with a current average monthly spend per player account at $283. He said, quote, when you get to the point where people are spending 3.2% of their average income on betting, you've got real demonstrable harm that is being done. Gambling losses of 1% of household income are associated with harms like depression, substance abuse, and divorce, he added. Moving into what we're watching in the weeks to come, Alberta officials are warning residents of a hamlet to be vigilant following a recent grizzly bear attack by an animal they say killed a person three years ago. The province says Alberta Fish and Wildlife Enforcement Services received a report on Sunday from the RCMP about a person being attacked by a female grizzly near Madden, about 45 kilometers northwest of Calgary. The victim, who was in a forested area at the time, sustained serious but non-life-threatening injuries. In a statement to CBC News, Alberta Fish and Wildlife Enforcement Services said the man was hunting when the attack happened. The province said the bear remains at large and was with what it described as sub-adult bears during the time of the attack. DNA samples have determined that the bear was also responsible for a fatal attack that occurred in 2021 near the village of Waporis, the province says. I apologize to the good people of the village. I probably mispronounced that. That attack happened in early May of that year and killed a man who was out for a run. A statement from the province said that fish and wildlife officers are actively working to locate the bear, including setting numerous traps and deploying low flying aircraft. Okay guys, and now just before we get into our comment roundup, friendly reminder to you all that this is my last week doing the Alberta roundup. My colleague Isaac Lamoureux is going to be taking over. He does so much of the Alberta coverage already. I'm sure you guys have read lots of his work and he's been on this show a couple of times so I'm sure you've got to meet him and I'm really looking forward to where he takes the show I know he's going to be a great fit but before I move on I just wanted to 
give a sincere thank you to all of you who have been watching the show. We've been doing it for over two years now, which is pretty crazy to believe, and I've learned so much. It's been really an amazing opportunity for me here at True North to sort of foray into the world of video podcasting. And there's been a couple, you know, rough moments and bumps along the road, but you guys have been patient with me, and I feel like we've really learned and grown in this process. But I'm excited to take everything that I've learned for my ne for my next challenge and opportunity at the Rachel Parker show and um, which I'll be covering still lots of Alberta news as of course I live in Alberta and know the ins and outs of the province there very well and there's always so many big news stories coming out of the province but also to be covering federal politics as well as some culture and maybe some health stories so that show will be launching about two weeks time and I hope that you guys will give it a watch I know that some of my viewers are just exclusively interested in Alberta news but I promise if you watch the show there'll probably be something in it for you as well and before we dive into our weekly comment round, here's a little taste of what that show is going to look like. Okay, everyone, and great job to my producers who put that trailer together. I love it, and I'm so excited for the show. And finally, on to our weekly comment roundup. User Bonnie, Bonnie's a good friend of mine, says, Welcome, Isaac, and congrats to Rachel. I'm looking forward to both shows. User Wayne Nodal said, As long as we get to hear from you in the future, it will be great to hear from both of you even more. Keep up the great work. Alberta needs you more than ever. And finally, user uh, at Lanchador said, Rachel, are you going to continue with Rachel and the Republic? Yes, we will be continuing that show till at least November till we know the results of the American election. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with that show, that is our American politics podcast. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for the kind words. And as I said before, for all the support over the last two years, I look forward to seeing you guys on the Rachel Parker show. Have a great weekend and God bless.